Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time uh, you may be watching this video. I send you greetings here from Pelham, Pelham Alabama. We have been here for several months. Uh, Park right next year to the church, Oak Mountain Independent Church, Pastor George Golden. Been a blessing to us and uh, enjoying the fellowship of the saints. Uh, I've been able to have meetings because of the fact that, as all you all know, uh, this uh, coronavirus has got everybody in. Uh, in place, but I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, share the Word of God with you, build your faith, things that the Lord laid on my heart. If you hear some traffic going by, there's a road here that has quite a lot of traffic. I'm sitting outside our motorhome here, enjoying uh, the beautiful scenery here in uh, Alabama. Everything is green. We've had a lot of rain, so uh, praise God. Anyway, I want to talk to you about deliverance is in your mouth. Uh, if you have your Bibles, look with me uh, to Proverbs, the 12th chapter, verse 6. You know, it's important that we understand this principle that the words of your mouth will affect you in a positive or a negative way. You know, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 20, and 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, what you love to speak, what you love to say, you're going to eat the fruit because words are seed that we sow into our hearts and they will even produce life or death. You know, God said in his word in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, I think it's verse 14. He said, this day I put before you death and life. Choose life that you may live. And choosing life is in obeying his commandments. One of the commandments is that we hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering. Hebrews 10, 23. For he's faithful to the promise. We have to hold fast to the confession of our faith. Uh, why is that? Because Satan knows that the only way he can defeat you, defeat you, is to get you you to speak words contrary to the word of God. You know, Proverbs six two says, "Thou art snared by the words of your mouth." So you know the devil will take you captive by the words that you speak out of your mouth. That's why you have to be very very careful about what you say. You know, James put it this way in James one nineteen: "Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath." Well, why did he say? be slow to speak because we need to think about what we're going to say does it line up with the word of god uh because if we speak contrary to the word of god uh, we're going to be snared we're going to be taken captive by the enemy and i hear uh christian people even ministers sometimes make some of the most you know in my opinion dumbest statements and i know sometimes they do it out of ignorance but they say foolish things that come out of their mouth amen you should not be speaking sickness and disease. You should not be speaking uh, doubt and fear and worry and, and lack. Uh, because God has a solution for all those things. Amen. In Philippians 4.19, he's promised to supply all your needs. In 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And Joel, the, the second chapter, the, or the third chapter, one of the two, it says, Let the weak say they're strong. Amen. See, God wants you to speak the answer, not the problem. And so many people are being taken captive by the words that they speak. Now, in the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter, verse 6, it says, The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. I want you to notice something. If you are upright, if you are born again, if you have made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, which if you've been born again, you are, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says so in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verse 21. He who knew no sin was made sin, that we might have made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so we are the righteous of God. We are the upright. And it says the, the words or the mouth of the upright will deliver them. In other words, with the words that you speak, you can deliver yourself. Amen. Um, David David had a revelation of that in Proverbs. I'm sorry, in Psalm 17, verse 4. And you can understand where, where Solomon got some of his wisdom from his father. Because his father had insight into these things. That's why Solomon talks about of the, the words that you speak, being careful about speaking uh, words. Uh, he's the one that wrote Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. Death and life from the power of the tongue. He's the one that wrote Proverbs 6, 2. Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. Uh, here in Psalm 17, verse four, uh, let's read verse 3 and 4. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried, uh, you have tried me and found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. See, this is, this is something that we have to purpose to do. I purpose not to speak contrary to the Word of God. And if I accidentally say things contrary to the Word, I'm going to treat them as sin. 
because in reality, that's what they are. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So when you speak things contrary to the word of God, you're sinning. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about Israel and Hebrews 3. They had an evil heart of unbelief and departed from the living God. They spoke contrary to the word. God calls them, uh, said he, they had an evil heart. So we need to, uh, we, we need to tread, we need to treat words that we speak contrary to the word of God as sin. I mean, you know, if you if you were hammering a nail uh, to hang up, you know, a picture frame that your wife wanted you to hang up, and you hit your nail, and and a curse came out of you, out of your mouth, well, you know, you 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 would know that that would be wrong. You quickly ask God to forgive you. Well, it's the same thing when we speak contrary to the word. Amen. Uh, we we need to treat it as sin. Now David pr purposed to do this, and he said in in verse four. Concerning the works of men, by the words of your lips, I have kept away from the path of the destroyer. In other words, I took your word, and through the words of my lips, uh, 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 by the words of, of, of your lips, in other words, the words that you spoke, I have spoken them, and I have kept myself from the path of the destroyer. Uh, turn with me to uh, Hebrews uh, I'm sorry, he make that uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 11. Now, I'm actually going to read from verse 7. We see all the catastrophes that are happening on the earth today. Uh, this is not God's wrath being poured out. This coronavirus is not God's wrath being poured out. We're living in a time of grace. The wrath of God begins when the church is taken out of here because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, that he has not called us to wrath, but of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the wrath of God begins during the tribulation period. Eight times in the first few chapters of uh, the book of Revelation, you'll find that it's called the wrath of God. So we're not living in a time of wrath. We're living in a time of grace. Amen. And so because God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of, of, of the Lord. And he doesn't want people to go to hell. People ought to go to hell because they choose to justify themselves before God some other way. You can only be justified before God through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, the, the, you're not going to be justified by God because you're a good person. I'm glad that if you're a good person, that's wonderful. But you cannot justify yourself by good works because we've all sinned. Romans 3.23, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so if you've sinned, there's nothing that, that, that can eradicate or wash away your sins except the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's the only way I can say it. Maybe you'll watch me today. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Well, you know, it's not hard. All you have to recognize is, number one, you're a sinner. And you need to ask God to forgive you and repent of your sins. And just say to him, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I invite you to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. It's just that simple. Amen. If you'll do it in faith from a heart that wants to turn away from the, uh, the life that you're living and turn to God, the moment that you do that, you will be born again. The Spirit of God will come inside of you. He'll make you a new creation. He will baptize you into the body of Christ. He will immerse you and put you into the body of Christ. You will be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Jesus in Colossians 1.13. The things that you used to desire to do, you won't want to do them anymore. I remember when it happened to me, March 1981, I got gloriously saved. And prior to that, you know, I liked the discotheques. I liked to drink... I, I, I used to like to drink rum and Coca-Cola and chase the the, the the ladies. And when I got born again, I didn't I didn't want any part of that lifestyle. I was not interested in bars. I mean, uh, I, I was I was interested in knowing God. I wasn't interested in drinking rum and Coca-Cola. I was interested in being in the presence of God, being filled with the Holy Ghost, listening to good teaching and preaching from the Word of God. I could have cared less. I had, at that time, I didn't even have a television. I could have cared less about television the movies or anything was hungry for God. Amen. And uh, I was radically changed. Uh, some of my, my friends that I worked with in the police department years ago, <laughs> they can't get it through their heads. It's been, you know, 39 years since I got born again. <laughs> and they still, you know, send me stuff. Sometimes they'll text me or something, uh, you know, some, some kind of, you know, whirly stuff, you know. Uh, sometimes it's even worse than that. And I said, hey, I'm a man of God. I don't, I, I don't look at stuff like that. Don't be sending me stuff like that. 
and they'll go, oh, 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 forgive me, forgive me. I, I, it was stupid. It was stupid. <laughs> because they, 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 they remember the old man, but that old man died with Christ. Amen. I have risen a new creation. That was March of 1981. I remember when I got born again, the guys that I used to work for in the police department, uh, they said, ah, he'll fall off that Jesus wagon. Well, it's been 39 years. I haven't fall off the wagon yet. Don't plan on starting now. <laughs> it's too late. Glory to God. Amen. I don't know what it is to backslide. I never have and I never will. Amen. No, I, I've, I've continued to serve God all these years and I have no regrets, you know, because I know what awaits me on the other side. And I'm not working for the temporal things of this world. Listen to me. All the money, all the wealth, all the luxury, all the toys that people have on this earth, they're not going to take it when they die. Amen. The billions of dollars that these people have made, they're not going to take it. The only thing you take with you is what you've done for or against God. And we will stand before God one day and have to give account. And I believe that I've been faithful to God and I look forward to hearing, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. You have been, you have been faithful of a little, I'm going to make you rule over much. That's what I'm working for. Amen. The things of the kingdom. Glory to God. All right. So in Revelation, the, the, the 12th chapter, uh, you know, uh, the things that we're seeing on, going on today, all the, the killing and all the... Uh, all the evil, amen, uh, the, 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 this coronavirus, uh, other viruses have taken place, the wars, uh, the, these, the humongous storms that have come, uh, they come to do one thing, and that is to kill, steal, and destroy. And that is a characteristic of the devil. Jesus said so in John 10, 10. He said the thief, meaning the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have in life and have more abundance. So God didn't send this coronavirus. Uh, into, into this earth. No, this was the devil. Amen. Whether it, were, whether it was made, you know, there's all kinds of different, uh, you know, theories going around, whether it was made by China as a biological, a biological weapon or, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff I've heard. Well, regardless how it came, the agent behind that is the devil, whatever method he used. And he's using it to destroy people's lives. But you don't have to be, uh, you know, you, you don't have to be a casualty. You don't have to be because we have great and precious promises from the Lord of God. I, I am not planning on getting coronavirus. I'm not going to get it. My family is not going to get it. Why is that? How can you be so bold? Because I am in covenant with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And He's made promises to me. And I believe those promises. And I speak them daily to keep them inside of my heart. Keep my heart full of faith. Amen. And we're going to see in, 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 the, in the book of uh, Psalm 91 in a little while that He will protect you from the, uh, from the, uh, the pestilence. And from from evil if you walk close to god amen but you have to believe it well how do you believe it you have to say it continually with your mouth that's how faith comes faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god so every time that you speak the word of god uh faith is coming into your heart now you're you're receiving faith now because i'm speaking the word of god into your life but it's also very important that you speak the word out of your mouth on a continual basis and don't be double-minded James 1 8 says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he'll receive anything from God. In other words, you, you, can't, you can't speak the word of God today and speak doubt and unbelief later on to, uh, tonight or tomorrow. No, that's being double minded. You have to hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering, without doubting. Faith, faithful to promise. God doesn't lie. I love Psalm 89 34. I meditate on it in the mornings in my, in my time with the Lord. It says, uh, the, my covenant I will not break nor alter the things that have come out of my mouth in other words if God spoke it he's not going to change his mind he doesn't change Malachi 3 6 says that there is no shadow of turning with God James 1 16 says that God doesn't turn that one iota if he said it he, he he will keep his covenant I believe it and he said to me in Psalm 91 and he said it to you if you dwell in the secret place of the most high no evil shall before you neither shall any plague come near your dwelling and that, that didn't include somebody in my family because he, here's what he said in Job 22. He said, I think it's uh, 30, 30, uh, 31, verse 31, somewhere in Ephesus. He, he, said, um, he said, he will deliver the one whom you intercede because of the cleanliness of your hands. As long as I keep my, my life clean before God, God is not only going to keep me, but he's going to keep my family members that don't, maybe they don't know him. Not living for God at the present time. Hey, but he's going to keep them. He's going to protect them. Why? He's going to honor my commitment to him. And he's going to watch out after my family. 
Now, in, in Revelation, the 12th the, the 12th chapter, a lot of people think that this is the original time that Satan was kicked out of heaven, but it wasn't. Satan was kicked out of heaven twice. The first time he got kicked out of heaven is found in Ezekiel 28, verse 12 through 19, when, when he got kicked out of God's holy mountain because he led a rebellion towards God, amen, and took away uh, or, or one third of the angels of, of heaven were stupid enough to follow Lucifer, who later became Satan. And God gave him a boot from his holy mountain. And the Bible says, Jesus said, he saw, he saw him uh, uh, over there in Luke, uh, the 10th chapter, he saw, I saw Satan falling uh, from heaven like lightning. And Ezekiel talks about in Isaiah 14 also about the fact that when he was kicked down, God caused him to burn up. And he lost that beauty. He became an ugly devil. Amen. And uh, and so the second time he got kicked out of heaven was when the blood of Jesus was taken up into heaven. Because we know that Satan, even though after he had been kicked out of heaven when he tried to overthrow God's throne, he, he was not thrown out of heaven totally. He was thrown out of the, 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 the holy mountain of God where he had the privilege of walking in the fire of stones. Uh, but he still had limited access to heaven because in the book of Job, the first chapter, when the angels went to present themselves before God, uh, it says the sons of God, but it's talking about the angels here. Uh, Satan went with them. And God said to them, where, where have you come from, uh, you know, Satan? And he says, I have come from walking to, uh, back and forth throughout the earth. So obviously he went from the earth up into heaven, but he had limited access. But when the blood of Jesus Christ was taken up to the holiest of holies up in heaven, that ended. And this is where we come in here. In verse 7, it says, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Notice he's already a dragon. All right? He's already a dragon. That means he's, he's in his fallen state. This is not Lucifer. This is the dragon that was already kicked out of heaven. But they did not prevail, nor was any place found for them in heaven any longer. Because prior to that, there was a place found in heaven, but not now. Now, once the blood went up there, no, this be, this earth is a prison to Satan. You know, there are three heavens. There's uh, the atmospheric heaven, the starry heavens, and the third heaven where God is. Satan can't go beyond this atmospheric heaven. The Bible calls him in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world. Uh, and in Ephesians, the second chapter, you know, he's called the prince of the power of the year. Uh, that's why we see the storms that we see uh, taking place. Uh, they're created by the devil. I know science has their own explanation, but I can prove you, prove it to you from the Bible. They're created by Satan, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, that's how he. That's how he killed uh, Job's kids with a whirlwind. I meant some kind of tornado activity. Um, he killed the servants and, uh, and his cattle with. They called it fire from from God because they believe everything good or bad came from God. But we know today that it was lightning. Lightning strikes. Well, we know in Job from the first chapter that it was Satan that did all of this. Amen. He used people. He used the weather. He used lightning. So even today, the storms that we see, the tornadoes. Now, you know, I'm here in Alabama for the last three months, and they have, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been coming here since the last 20 years, and I, I've, I've been here when they've had uh, tornadoes. And um, so, you know, every once in a while, there, just the other day, uh, two, one or two days ago, there were a couple of tornadoes hit there, Alabama and Mississippi. Well, when I hear about coming down this way and they, I get a weather report, I say, I bind the prince of the power of the air over Shelby County, where I'm at, Pelham, Alabama, and the surrounding communities. See, I take authority over that. Why? Because this is my domain where I'm at presently. Amen. And as long as I'm here, we're not going to have tornadoes. And she's because I'm not going to allow the devil to do that. Well, how can you be so bold? Because I have the word of God. God said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. One translation, whatever you permit on earth is permitted in heaven. Whatever you don't permit on earth is, not, is what's not permitted in heaven. Well, the reason Satan is able to do the things that he's doing today because the church, for the most part, is powerless. Amen? They don't know, they don't know who they are in Christ. And the, the gospel, has, in certain uh, cases, has been watered down to a feel-good message. What it basically boils down to. I mean, Christians don't understand the, 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 the power and the authority that they have in the name of Jesus. And we do have authority over storms because Jesus exercised our authority over storms. Uh, we, we saw that when a great tempest arose as he was asleep on the boat. He was going to the other side. 
and the disciples feared. It was a great tempest. It just manifested all of a sudden, so like a hurricane. And and so what happened? Uh, sorry about the, getting all these news reports coming down on the, on my phone. Um, uh, so what happened? They woke him up, and he rebuked the storm. Well, didn't he say in John fourteen twelve, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works than he, because I go to the Father? See, because if these things are not preached, people are not going to have the faith to do so. Because faith comes up by here. And for the most part, these things, unfortunately, are not preached in most places. Now, verse, uh, again, 9. So the great dragon was cast down, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Where, where was the loud voice in heaven? Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused him before our God day and night has been cast down. Now the Christ has come, the anointed one. The Christ the anointed one who gave himself up at the cross of Calvary as a human being, hung naked on the cross, suffered for us, rose up victorious from the, from the grave and from hell, took the keys to hell and of, 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 of death from Satan took his authority. All authority is given to Jesus. He didn't keep it up in heaven. He gave it to the church. He said, you go in my name. You cast that devils. Mark the 16th chapter. Mark 20, uh, Matthew 28. You go in my name and cast that devils. Lay hands in sick. Speak in new tongues. I mean, you know, we, we, have, we have the power. It's in the name of Jesus. We have the authority. It says, and they overcame him. Notice, they overcame him who? Satan. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The word that comes out of their mouth. They overcame by the blood and the word. The blood not only washes your sins away. And listen, if you sin, you want to close the door to the devil. Because Ecclesiastes, I think it's 10.8, says, If you break down the hedge, the serpent will bite you. We have a hedge of protection around us, just like Job did in Job, the first chapter. Job broke that, that hedge because he feared. And he said in Job 3.25, He said, The things that I greatly feared have come upon me. Job feared, he opened the door. And so we, we have to make sure we don't break down the hedge. And one way is through fear. Another way is by, by sin. If you sin, 1 John 1, 9 says, If you confess your sins, he is faithful and righteous. Forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteous. No wonder this false teaching that has gone forth from Joseph Prince about a believer never has to confess their sins. That the epistle of John written to the agnostics. Uh, that, that's false doctrine, my brother and my sister. That's inspired by the devil, amen? Uh, because Satan doesn't want you to judge yourself concerning sins. Because if, if, if you don't judge yourself, the, the, the hedge is down, he's able to attack you. He has a right to attack you. That's why you have to keep the hedge of protection. If you miss it, run to God, repent, he ask him to forgive you. The blood covers you, uh, washes your sins, rather, and, 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 and the hedge is back up. Now, the other thing about the blood is it protects you. If the blood of an animal in the Old Testament, talking about in Numbers, uh, the 14th chapter there, where the destroyer came, uh, Exodus, the 14th chapter, rather, when the destroyer came to destroy the firstborn, uh, you remember the story? Over there when, when they were in Egypt, and the 10 plagues came, and the last one was when the destroyer would come and destroy the firstborn. Uh, the destroyer was the devil. It wasn't God. It was the devil. Uh, he's the one that came, came to destroy the firstborn. God just permitted it to be so. But when they applied the blood of a lamb on their dope horse, which was a type and shadow of the blood of Jesus, the destroyer was not able to go in to that house and kill the firstborn. Well, you can apply the blood, faith in the blood over your home. I do it all the time. Over your motor home, your car, your workplace, your church. I use the, the faith in the blood all the time to protect us. Amen. But you need to also have the word of your testimony come out of your mouth. You need to constantly speak the word of God. That's why God told Joshua in Joshua 1 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt meditate on it. Why? Day and night that you may observe to do all that is written in. Then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. The word meditate in the, in the Hebrew there in Joshua 1 8 is the word haga. It means to utter, to mutter, to ponder. It means to speak. It means to murmur. It, it emphasizes the speaking part of meditating. Amen. Because speaking the word of God is very, very important. Now it says, And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. 
Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell them. Why would the earth be? Re- why would heavens be rejoicing? They don't have to put up with the devil going up there anymore. He can't. So he says, rejoice, because they would grieve the, the, the angels, and uh, they were in heaven when Satan went up there accusing the brethren. Uh, they would be grieved, and says, so, therefore rejoice, the heavens, you who dwell them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why does it mention the earth and the sea? Well, because of the storms that we see happening in the sea. Amen. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come to you having great wrath because he knows his time is short. All right? So that's why we're seeing the things that we're seeing, the coronaviruses, the, the killings, the wars, all the stuff that's going on in the world. I mean, catastrophic uh, uh, stuff. I mean, what's happening right now, it's just, I, I've never seen such a thing, uh, you know, where 900 people will die in one day in, 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 uh, in Italy. I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, unfathomable. Even in, a, in my own home state in New Jersey, I've been keeping up with the news and, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of people that are, di- that are dying, you know, 60, 70 people in one day. Uh, it's horrific. It's from Satan. Amen. It's from Satan. And now when the dragon, uh, and now it says, um, uh, for the devil has come down uh, having great wrath because he knows his time is short. So Satan knows his time is short. That's why he's doing the things that he's doing. Then it says in verse 13, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. That would be Israel. Israel is the one that gave birth to the Messiah, to Jesus here. And that's why Israel has been persecuted for so many years and will be persecuted during the tribulation period greatly. The tribulation period will be worse than the Holocaust, unfortunately. Jesus said that. He didn't mention the Holocaust, but he said that there haven't been days like that and all the earth never will be. He said if, if those days weren't shortened, uh, nobody nobody would make it. Uh, and God shortened those days. Now, let's turn with me to Psalm 91. And I, I want to finish here because it's very, very important that you meditate uh, Psalm 91. And remember, meditation means also to speak it and actually emphasizing the speaking part. Uh, Psalm 91 says this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. So this is for the person that's walking close to God. Folks, this is no time to be far away from God. Uh, you know, you have no defense against the devil. The only defense that we have against the devil is God. He's our refuge. He's our strength. And he's given us weapons that are powerful. The Bible says so in 2 Corinthians 10, chapter verse 3 through 5. They are powerful. They're pulling down those strongholds. And so you want to be close to God. If, you, if you're watching me and, you, and you're a Christian that's lukewarm or you, you backslid, you need to go run to God. You need to go lock yourself up in your prayer closet and, and ask God to forgive you uh, and humble yourself before God and cry out to God, amen, for His mercy. And get yourself right with God and then find yourself a good local church with a good pastor, amen? Not just any pastor, because not every pastor is good. But pray and ask God, lead me to a good pastor, a good Holy Ghost church where they teach the Word of God and they have integrity. And God will lead you, amen? And then, then submit yourself to that pastor and let him teach you the Word of God and disciple you. It says, I will say of the Lord. Notice that. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, him will I trust. That's what I'm saying about the Lord. He is my refuge. Amen. He is my fortress. My God, him will I trust. I'm trusting him to keep you from all the stuff that's going on. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Is this pestilence perilous? You better believe it. Look how many people have died so far. Amen. And they're projecting a lot more. I pray that they're wrong in Jesus' name. Amen. But the bottom line is that it is, is it, it is a deadly pestilence. And that's why, listen to me, uh, there, there, there's, I, I, I'm, I'm, there's so much controversy right now uh, started by these pastors uh, who decided to have church service when the authorities told them not to. Uh, and they've caused a lot of division and a lot of strife in the body of Christ. That ought to show you that it, that it wasn't God that led them to do that. Amen. Uh, it was either the devil or their or their ego or or their their you know uh, figuring if we don't have service the, the, the people aren't going to tie the whatever their motive was 
It's not coming from God because we see the fruit. It's causing division. And I get tired of, of watching Christians making them heroes. They're not heroes. We're, uh, Romans at 13 chapter says we're to, to submit ourselves to the authorities. Okay? God put these authorities in, in the earth and the Bible says we are to reverence them. We are to respect them. The authorities that, that are now are not prohibiting us from worshiping God. They are dealing with a pandemic, with a pestilence, and they're trying to save people's lives. And so it doesn't spread. They don't want a lot of people congregating together. They're doing it for our own good. And I, I, I can't understand for the life of me why uh, a pastor would, would risk the lives of the people that he pastors. And, and listen to me, there, there, there have been churches, a uh, matter of fact, a church right here, one of the pastors told me, uh, the pastor decided to have service, and, and he got sick, and about 40 people in this church got sick. Uh, and and, and, and it, it's happened uh, in a different, different places. It's foolishness. Amen? So don't make them a hero. I hear Christians saying, oh, they're like me, Shashak, and they're in the, in the fire. No, he's not. He brought it upon himself. Uh, that's why they were, they were warned not to, not to do that. Uh, the, the authorities went the extra mile. You know, and, and I get so tired of uh, reading some of this stuff. And you, you're making a hero out of somebody that doesn't serve the air. They need, they, they need to, to, to ask God to forgive them. They need to go before the congregation and ask them to forgive them for their stupidity. Amen? Because what they did was wrong. And if you're a pastor and you're watching me, you need to obey those that are in authority. Okay? It would be different if there was nothing going on in our country and the, and the government said you can't have church. Then we would have a right to do contrary to what they said. But that's not the case here. The case is the fact that the, the authorities, and we have a godly president, amen, uh, who, 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 who ordered this to take place and, uh, and to, to, to protect lives, and we should submit ourselves. And I don't understand people that are rebellious, particularly pastors. It's foolishness, amen? And, and if somebody dies in your congregation, it, it's blood on, you, on your hands, amen? Blood on your hands, and God's going to hold you accountable to it. On top of that, you're giving our enemies uh, uh, ammunition because you're bringing reproach and shame to the gospel of Jesus Christ and, 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 and to the church. So that's my opinion, and I approve of this. <laughs> All right, let me get back to teaching. Uh, so he goes on to say, verse 3, Surely he should deliver you from the spirit of the fire, from the perilous pestilence. And he shall cover you with his feathers, and on his wings you shall take refuge. Now, God doesn't have feathers, and he doesn't have wings. But this is a picture of, a, of a, for example, like a, a, a bird or a chicken or something, you know, that has little chicks, and the little chicks get afraid. They come to Mama, and Mama lifts up her wings, and they hide under there, and they're protected. This is what God is referring to. Amen. I want to be your protector. I want you to come under my refuge. And when you come close to me, I'm going to keep you. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 121, he'll keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Uh, notice what it says. He shall cover with his feathers and with you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now we know that John 17, 17 says, thy word is true. The word of God is a shield and a buckler. Amen. A buckler is a, is a smaller shield for close combat. Uh, a, a shield is a bigger shield for distant combat. God said, he's going to be your protector through the words that come out of your mouth. You're going to build that hedge by speaking contrary, con constantly the word of God. Not contrary, constantly the word of God. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Why? Your heart's going to be full of faith. No, of the pestilence that walks in darkness. See, fear, listen to me, listen to me very carefully. Fear will draw that pestilence to you. That's, that's what opened up the door to, to, to Job. In Job 3.25, he said, the things that I greatly fear to come upon me. He feared that his kids were sinning. He feared. He offered sacrifices, but he didn't fear. And as a result, that was the open door where Satan came and brought great destruction upon his, his children, upon all that he had, all his wealth, and even afflicted him with sickness and disease. But when your heart is full of faith, you're not going to fear. You, but if you don't feel your heart full of faith, there's a spirit of fear attached to this coronavirus. I watch people. I go to Walmart or wherever to get groceries, and I watch people, you can see it in their face. They're afraid, amen? They're afraid of what's going on. They got gloves, they got masks, got, I mean, I one guy said, six feet, six feet, you know? I mean, the guy's panicking, you know? And so, uh, well, you don't have to live that way. Now, you know, it's smart to take the necessary precautions. I do wash my hands, okay? 
uh, if I go to Walmart or one of the stores, I get the wipes, wipe down the cart. That's just common sense. That's just wisdom. But I'm not walking in fear, and I know God's got my back, and He's got, it's in His Word. He said, No, of the pestilence that walks in dark, and the source of the in noonday, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall come not, not near you. So, yeah, uh, there are people dying. S- sadly so, they are. Satan has come to kill, stone, and destroy, but it won't come near you. If you're walking close to the Almighty, if you're speaking God's word, if you're standing on His promises, only with your eyes you should look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Amen. That's why I can boldly say, it's not coming to my dwelling. Amen. Not, not coming to my wife and I. And not coming to my family. Because I got them all covered. Even those that don't know Jesus yet. I got them all covered. I've interceded for them. It says, For he should give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they bear you up, lest you dash your foot against stone. You should tread upon the lion, the cobra, you can lion, the serpent. You shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Now here's, here's the key. You got to set your love upon the Lord. Now the Bible says in John 14, 21 through 27, Jesus said, He that loveth keepeth my commandment. He that doesn't love me doesn't keep my commandments. So how do we show God we love him? We keep his word. We do what he says. And 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 because we set our love upon him, he will deliver us. And he's going to set us on high because, he had, we, because we have no one his name. Excuse me. Yeah. My nose got itchy all, all of a sudden. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. What great and precious promises. I, I get so excited when I read this, because this is God's promises to me. God, a God who cannot lie. Second Timothy 1 says, God cannot lie. Hebrews 6, 18 says, it's impossible for God to lie. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he shall lie. Has he spoken it? Will he not bring it to pass? Of course he will. Jeremiah one twelve says, God watches over his word to perform it. Isaiah 55, God says, The word that comes out of my mouth shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and I'll prosper in the thing that I send it. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I hope I preached yourself happy. I know I did me. Hey, thank you for joining me. I hope that it has been a blessing to you. I always enjoy when you leave your comments. Have a great and wonderful day. I have some other things that I want to share with you. Um, probably in the next couple of days that God has given me to share. God bless.